he is football's greatest ever player. And Pelé reached that pinnacle while spending most of his career at a smallish club from Sao Paulo State in southeast Brazil. Throughout the 1960s, he led a phenomenal group of footballers as they toured the world, leaving fans everywhere mesmerized. The game's European giants came to realize that South America had given birth to a team that would have lasting recognition as one of the most magnificent ever seen, Santos. Back then, Santos were regarded as the best team in the world. It was a fantastic team, and we achieved everything we could. Sao Paulo state champions several times, twice world champions, and lots of big victories in Europe. We were addicted to it. We just wanted more and more titles. And we hated losing. There were virtually no weaknesses. Santos managed to put together a team back then where everyone played with the same aim. And what was that aim? To play well. To make sure that the fans enjoyed what they were watching and to win titles. Santos, we traveled throughout the Americas, throughout Europe and all over Brazil too, and we didn't fear anyone. The reason that Santos was global was that people wanted to watch football played beautifully. Wherever Santos went, we'd always be well known. We'd always play in full stadiums. We never played to empty seats. Everyone wanted to see the great Santos team. That Santos team won titles in France, Italy, Mexico, Argentina, the Copa Roca. Santos were champions of everything. For Santos, it was unquestionably a glorious era. Their earlier history, however, had been very different. Back then, Santos were considered a small town team, despite being so close to Sao Paulo, but we were still regarded as a small town team. Founded in 1912, the club's first 40 years were modest. It wasn't a small club, but a medium sized one. They didn't win championships and were just starting out. But luckily for us, we had a youth team coach who was very intelligent. And our chairman realized this and promoted him to the first team. As a manager, he was superb. He had great vision. He was coach of the juniors and then the seniors and had brilliant overall perspective. This coach was Lula, and his vision was aided by a special group of players, many of whom went on to represent Brazil. In 1956, we'd won the Sao Paulo State Championship, and that was without Pelé. Pelé only joined us at the end of the year. He wasn't involved in those successes. It was in 1956 that the club was changed forever by the arrival of Edson Arantes do Nascimento from Bauru. When I was 15, I trained for the first time with Santos, and after just one training session, they signed me up. Lula, the coach back then, called my father and said, let him stay here to have a trial with us. So I never went back to Bauru and stayed in Santos. 
He had everything that a footballer should have. He was a player of the highest level. Even today, I still haven't seen anyone I can compare him to, because he had every quality a player could need. Ability on the ball, great vision, good reactions. It was incredible how he jumped off the floor and how he headed the ball. Pelé was a complete player. He was born to play football. Santos were accustomed to welcoming players from all over Brazil and had established a system for integrating the new arrivals. When I arrived, I lived at a house belonging to the club. That's where a lot of the young players went when they arrived. They do live there too. And many great friendships were made there in that house. The atmosphere between us at this guest house where we lived was crucial to where the team ended up. There was always something we'd do at the end of every match. We'd go home, sit at the table and to eat, and we'd then play a game which we called the game of truth. Everyone had to say exactly what they thought of the match we just played. If they thought I played well or you played badly, uh, why didn't you pass the ball to me? And that really helped the group a lot because the best players in the team lived in the guest house. That team swept all before them, winning the Sao Paulo Championship eight times in the 60s alone, playing dazzling football that is still celebrated today. The strong point of that Santos side was our attack. It was an incredible front line, as the majority of our forwards scored easily. Dorval would score, so would Cuchin. There's no point even talking about Pelé, and the same goes for Pepe. We had this exceptional attack. We had Zito holding in midfield. Players like Formiga, Gilmar in goal, Mauro. A great team. The main starting 11 back then that won nearly everything was Gilmar, Lima, Mauro, Dalmo, Calva or Formiga, Zito, and then Dorval, Mengalvio, Coutinho, Pele, and Pepe. I think it's easier to say, what was the weak point of the team? There were virtually no weaknesses. Santos managed to put together a team back then where everyone played with the same aim. But what was that aim? To play well. To make sure that the fans enjoyed what they were watching and to win titles. He had great vision for the game. And when he made me captain, I felt like he was giving me the whole club. And I helped him a lot. When the players needed a kick up the backside, I didn't let them get comfortable. Zito would shout on the pitch. He was a defensive linchpin, the mouthpiece of the team. I helped everyone out. For example, I never let the board or Lula try and exploit us. If the players needed more money because salaries were low, I'd get them better salaries. I'd go to the board and I'd get them a better wage. The players knew and appreciated that, so they helped me out and supported me on the pitch. The first Brazilian team to become South American champions now sought an even bigger prize. These days, Brazilian teams have a bit more experience of playing in international competitions, but not back then. We barely realized we were South American champions when we were then told we'd be playing for the world title against Benfica. That's the first time we knew what was happening. The Portuguese had a great team with an attack almost as good as our own. José Augusto, Eusebio, Torres, Coluna and Simões. 
When we arrived in Portugal to play the game, and we went to the hotel, we saw so many banners saying, Benfica, world champions, Benfica, champions. There were loads of banners out, before the game had even been played, and that got to us, especially me. I thought, God, we haven't even played the game and they're already celebrating. And that motivated us on the day to run the extra yard and be even better prepared. It was 4-0 before they'd even opened their eyes. It was incredible. Just a fantastic exhibition of football. So we won the game very easily indeed. 5-2. We've been 5 nil up, and they managed to score twice only towards the end. It was very easy. Pelé had possibly the greatest game of his career. He scored three. Coutinho got one, and I got the other. At the end of the game, something unforgettable happened. There must have been only about a thousand Brazilians in the crowd that night. They were nearly all Portuguese and obviously supporting Benfica. But the whole stadium gave our team a standing ovation. Pelé was just too much for them in that game. Too much. I reckon that was one of the best games I have ever played in my life. No doubt at all. I remember when we went back, we didn't go back to Brazil directly. We went through Germany and England. We played another three or four games before heading back to Brazil. When we landed in Sao Paulo, it was all fairly normal. A few people came out to greet us. But here, in Santos, it was a huge party. The bus stopped on the edge of the city. Actually, it was a fire engine. But there was such a huge parade that the fire engine could barely go anywhere in the city. At the town hall, people paid tribute to us. And then we got to the Villa Belmiro and the stadium was full. We didn't realize how much that win represented. The following year, Santos defended both their Libertadores title, defeating Boca Juniors at the Bombonera, and their intercontinental crown against AC Milan. It was a much more difficult game than against Benfica. In 62, the Portuguese were a lot more afraid of us and respected us more than the Italians, who marked well and played physically. We were without Pele, Zito and Calvé, three important players. We beat Milan after an incredible comeback. We were two down and won 4-2. Santos had become the most exciting team on the planet and it helped that they had the most marketable star. With Pele on the pitch, Santos would receive about $40,000. Without him, it would be $10,000. So he got a lot more money, but we all accepted that fact. It was fabulous playing in all those different countries. The stadiums would always be full. It was just fantastic. Some places would make it a public holiday when Santos arrived to play. It would be a holiday, and no one would work, just so they could watch Santos play. That Santos team won titles in France, Italy, Mexico, Argentina, the Copa Roca. Santos were champions of everything. Just an incredible team. We could play in Africa in 50 degrees heat, and then the next week win in virtually the North Pole, where the weather was minus 10. We never had this thing of saying we needed time to adapt to a place. We just go out on the pitch, play, and win. We didn't have time to train, so we'd train in the aisle on the plains. We'd run onto the plane, we'd eat on the plane, we'd even change into our kit as we'd go direct to the stadium where our opponents were already waiting for us. We'd often leave the plane already in our kit to go and play. Sometimes we didn't even eat. Often there was a bench at the stadiums full of snacks, fruit, sandwiches, and we'd eat something quickly while the other team warmed up. It was madness, it was incredible. 
É que eu costumo falar, os grandes jogos do Santos... The Great Santos episódio. Games weren't here in Brazil. Jogos do Santos They were played abroad. Daqui. The Congo and another country were at war. I can't remember which country. But when it was announced that Santos were going to play there, the war actually stopped. In the two days we played, everything stopped. There wasn't any gunfire. The police and the military stopped going about the city. It was an incredible party. We arrived, played, won and left. And as soon as we left, the war started up again. <laughs> Santos had gone global, but at home the roots grew stronger. Santos have a huge fan base these days, maybe one of the biggest in Brazil. And that's all down to the work we began in that era. Kids who grew up back then and watched that great Santos team play suddenly became Santos fans. And that gets passed down from generation to generation. And that has made Santos one of the best supported clubs in Brazil. Santos were the only club from the São Paulo region who were well received in Rio. People from Rio loved watching Santos. They might be Fluminense fans or Vasco fans or Botafogo, but they all loved Santos. Another factor in the club's popularity was that most of the team were black, which was significant not just for Brazil's racially mixed population, but across the world. There was a great period when Edu started playing on the left, so he had a forward line of just black players. Me, Mengalvio, Pele, Coutinho and Edu. It was a great forward line. Edu had a great period at Santos, another great player, Tite as well. That's when we promoted the image of black players in football, to try and give that social support all over the world. We only had one white player. We used to joke with him that he was a spy. It was Pepe. He was the only white player in our attack. And he was the spy. What was he doing over there on the left wing? Dorval was black? I was black, Coutinho was black, Pelé was black, and then it was just him as the white man. <laughs> but behind the jokes lay a fierce work ethic and an unbreakable bond. It was a fantastic team. I don't think I've ever seen a team like it. We had great players and a really good spirit, good friendships. It's great, because even though we've stopped playing together a long time ago, we're still good friends. Santos had a fantastic team. Maybe if Pele had started out with another team, who weren't as great as Santos were, then he might have had a few problems. He may have taken a bit longer to show what he could do. You get players who stay at a club for 10 years, but for everyone to stay at the same club for 10 years is very rare. That's how it was at Santos, and it was amazing. We did everything at Santos and gave Brazilian football so much joy. Santos always had a big influence on our World Cup wins. Santos gave the national team a lot of players, especially in that era up until 1970. We had Gilmar, who was the World Cup winning goalkeeper in 58 and 62. The centre-back who I played alongside was Mauro, who had captain Brazil in 62. And Orlando Pesce, who won the World Cup in 1958. Then in midfield, our captain was Zito, a World Cup winner. We had Mengalvio, Dorval, Coutinho, Pepe. So most of the team had won a World Cup. And then on top of everything else, we had Pele. The legacy of this sensational team who took on all comers and conquered the world can still be seen today. Robinho Ganso and Diego all starred as the club won the 2011 Copa Libertadores. Also prominent was the latest pretender to Pele's throne, Neymar, who joined Barcelona in 2013. All these players, though, 
will be forever measured against us fantasticos. Coisa inédita. It was something that had never been seen before. Dez anos mais brilhante. For ten years, this team outshone everyone in Brazil. North America, America do Sul, South America, America do Norte, and Europe. Europa. We were like a machine. In my time, it was packed full of people who wanted to see the football here. People came from everywhere to see us play. It was always a full house, wonderful. The greatest memory that I have is being part of that team and of this great club and playing 12 years at the side of the king of football. He was number 10 and I was number 11. And I was the one who got to see close up the incredible things he could do. I can't forget either all the other players who were part of that generation and who helped make Santos one of the great teams of world football.